Hey, hi, hello, my name is Discat. This is Project Hardcover, where we're letting books be the escape. Hi everyone, and welcome to The New Angle. Uh, I, I couldn't make the floor or standing in front of the bookcases work today. I don't know why. So now we're facing this way, and this mess back here is indeed my bed. You know, where all the magic happens. And by that, I mean reading, reading, you dirty-minded people, reading, God. Anywho, for today, I have my October wrap-up. I read a grand total of six books in October, which was really good, like really good. I'm really proud. So with that being said, let's get started. The first book that I tackled in the month of October was Geek Love by Katherine Dunn. OMG, this book, oh, just, this book, man, that's, that's all I can say, really, just, wow, wow. I'm gonna try and find words, though. So, as I mentioned in my TBR, this book is about two carnies who decide to spice up their carnival sideshow thing by having mutant children, and it basically tells the account of all of that, and just, oh, Words. I'm trying to find words. This book was so messed up. And the thing is, is that I knew it was going to be messed up, but not this messed up. Oh, it was so messed up, but it was so good at the same time. This book, just morals, was, it, morals was just like a giant question mark. And it was just so intriguing to get into the mindsets of these people people who were just all different kinds of messed up in all different kinds of ways and it was just so fascinating and really disturbing in a way because you know they're really messed up but a lot of what they say makes sense in some weird way and it was uh it was just really good in a really messed up way. I cannot underline that fact enough that it was just really, really messed up. But the characters were so intricate and complex and so vastly different from each other. The story was really interesting and it just, oh, the themes and the morals and the questions and the meanings and oh, this was really good. Like, really, really good. I really enjoyed this. I'm pretty sure I gave this a four, maybe even a five out of five stars. It was, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Like, super. This was, wow. Just wow. The second book that I read in October was not on my October TBR, but I acquired it and, oh, I tried to resist. I tried to resist reading it and it didn't work. But anywho, that book is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. So Brian Lee O'Malley is the guy who did the Scott Pilgrim comic books and oh I saw this and it was so pretty and it was so inviting and I saw Raylene from Padfoot and Prong 07. She either reviewed it or she hauled it and I just remember being like oh I need that. I need that in my hands. So I made the thing happen and I read it and it was so good. So this is a graphic novel that follows the story of Katie and Katie is a chef and she is about to open a brand new restaurant that she owns and trying to do all of the adult things in life but some hiccups happen. One of which being she has a house spirit in her old restaurant that she is still currently living in. It's weird. So basically it tells about the shenanigans that she gets up to trying to deal with this house spirit and these magical powers that she's realizing that she can use and abuse because of this house spirit. And it's so cute. It's so cute. The story is adorable and of course Brian Lee O'Malley's artwork has always been just so painfully cute. I mean look at her. I know you only see like half of her face, but she's she's so cute. 
it's adorable, and it's a wacky, funny story. I mean, you know, if you guys have read the Scott Pilgrim stuff, you kind of have a feel for what the humor is like, and that is present. It is funny, and the characters are really quirky and fun and relatable, and it is just a really fun, wacky story, but there are a lot of deep moments in this and a lot of serious questions and stuff that happens, and it's really cool to see that type of stuff address. It really is great, and I really, really like this. I'm pretty sure I gave this a four out of five stars. I really liked it. This was, oh, this was so good. I like, I loved it, and it's so pretty. The book itself, the book itself is so pretty. I love, I love this book. It's just, ah, uh, it's eye candy. It's book candy. Is book candy a thing? We should make book candy a thing. I'm like implementing it now. Book candy is not a thing. Hashtag book candy. If they're really, really pretty, book candy. The third book that I read in the month of October, oh, I just super loved, super, super, super loved, and it was Libra Bray's The Diviners. So this book follows Evie, and she is from a small-ish town in Ohio, but she has a little bit of a quirk about her. She is able to tell certain things about a person by touching an object that belongs to them, like rings, handkerchiefs, stuff like that. And naturally, because Evie can be a little bit of a show-off and likes being the center of attention, it gets her into some trouble. So her parents ship her off to live with her uncle who owns a very peculiar museum in New York City. And this is all happening in the 1920s during the Prohibition era. And basically, Evie finds herself smack dab in the middle of this paranormal kind of battle between good and evil. And it's just so interesting and thrilling and amazing. And I loved this. I loved this so, so much. Again, like the other books that I've read this month, these characters were all so different, had their own voices, their own quirks, just completely vastly different from each other, and it was just really, really nice. The story was so interesting and gripping and so super creepy sometimes. Like, it was terrifying reading this at points. And the language was beautiful, beautiful, just so great. I absolutely love, loved this book. I cannot wait for the sequel to come out. I just wish, uh, what is up with Little Brown and the redoing of these covers? What, what is wrong with this cover? This cover is beautiful. Why, why did you guys switch over to the new not pretty covers? I don't want the sequel to have that icky cover. I like these covers. So yes, absolutely loved this. Pretty sure I also gave this book either a four or maybe even a five out of five stars. Just so, so good. Definitely, definitely a great Halloween-y book. I know I haven't mentioned this, but this was the most Halloween-y book that I read this month. Like, I know that was my goal, like, with this whole TBR, but Really, this one. This one was the most Halloween-y out of all of them. The fourth book that I read this month was also not on my TBR, but I needed to read it for school, and I've also been meaning to get my hands on it for a while because I love this lady's blog, and it is Hyperbole and a Half. Unfortunate situations, flawed coping mechanisms, mayhem, and other things that happened by Ali Brosh. You guys have no idea how hard that title is to say. So yes, Allie Brosh has a blog also called Hyperbole and a Half. She's had it for a while and she decided to make a book and oh, people, I cannot tell you how funny this book is. It is, I was seriously reading through tears at points because of how hard I was laughing. Basically, the book is done in like this art style. It's it's kind of like, it's a graphic kind of memoir thing. It's nonfiction. These are stories from her life, but they're done in like these really crude little like Microsoft Paint illustrations and stuff. And oh, it's so funny. So hilariously funny. And the beautiful thing is, is she has this beautiful, beautiful way of constructing her story. She doesn't like use chat speak or say like or any of that stuff. She uses beautiful, beautiful, sophisticated ways of speaking 
and yet she is making you roll around on the floor laughing. It is just so amazing. I, I didn't really know you could do that, but it's so great. But also, there are just really painfully, painfully poignant moments in this. She speaks about depression, and I swear to you, it is the most realistic and just true definition or explanation, I guess would be the better word, of depression I have ever seen in my life. And it's so real, and it's so heart-wrenching, and it's just so amazing. This book is fantastic. Again, this is nonfiction. I like never read nonfiction, but definitely, definitely, if you have any means by which to read a book or have one read to you or anything, please, please get your hands on this. It is so fantastic, so great. You will not at all regret it. Definitely gave this like a five out of five stars. So awesome. I loved this. The fifth book that I read in the month of October was The Monstrumologist by Rick Yancey. This book is about a young man named Will Henry who, after being left orphaned, goes to live with the Monstrumologist. And basically what a Monstrumologist is, is he hunts and studies monsters. And Will and the Monstrumologist have just been thrown into this wild mystery of these really creepy and deadly dangerous monsters prowling around their town and they have to solve you know the mystery of who brought them here and also have to get rid of them because they're kind of killing everyone this story was also just really gripping and really interesting and intriguing though i will admit at points the language was really really dense and heavy and it was really wordy and it did get a little annoying but a I kind of did just kind of get over it because one it was appropriate for the time period this takes place I'm thinking 1880s so it was the way that people were speaking at the time and two the action in this book was so good so crazy amazing went by so fast and oh man they did not at all go easy on the brutality or the gore or anything like this stuff got really really gross and creepy and scary at times and it was just really really awesome i really really liked this book the writing style wasn't what i was expecting i was expecting really you know, subtle, epic writing style, kind of like how the Fifth Wave books are written. It's not at all written like that, but it was still really, really great. Gave it four out of five stars. I really, really liked this, and I cannot wait to read the second one. I do have it. Just, mm. I love Rick Yancey. Like, Rick Yancey, you are one of my dudes. Just keep writing. Just please keep writing for, like, ever, please. And then the sixth and final book that I read in the month of October was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Rakes. Now, I think, like most people, I went into reading this expecting it to be really scary, for it to be like a haunted house, you know, ghost story kind of thing. And that's not at all what this is. But that's not to say that this book still wasn't really, really good. So basically, this book tells the story of Jacob, who for years has been told these really fantastical stories by his grandfather about this island and this orphanage and these very peculiar children that he grew up with. And of course, when Jacob was a child, he totally believed all of this. But as he got older, he, you know, figured, eh, Grandpa's just a little crazy. But then, after the unexpected and very, also, peculiar death of his grandfather, Jacob decides to go and find this old orphanage and these peculiar children. And this starts just a whole whirlwind of an adventure. Again, this book wasn't scary in the way that I anticipated it to be. I mean, of course, there were moments when the action got really, really heavy and it became scary, but overall, it was not a scary book. This book was more of a self-discovery kind of story, and that was really, really nice. I was not expecting it, and it was done very, very well. Also, like all of the other 
books that I've read this month, these characters were just so vastly different and so beautifully fleshed out and just so amazing in their own individual way. And it was just so great to have a month just full of that, of just vastly diverse characters. And it was just, I really, really liked that. The action was really, really fast paced. The intrigue was super heavy in this book. And it totally, the ending, the t it totally did not go the way that I thought it would, and that was also super, super awesome. And also, these creepy pictures just, oh, they did wonderful things for this story. I just, I didn't think that they would. I thought they would just be thrown in there for shock value or something, but no, they totally did help the narrative just so, so much. I really did like the story. Four out of five stars. I cannot wait to get my hands on Hollow City. Just... Ooh, I'm so glad I read this. I'm not as in love with it as Jesse the Reader, but I do definitely see the appeal. So thank you, Jesse, for convincing me to read this. And that's it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of October. I know I didn't get to Strega, that ARC that I got, but I do plan on reading it in November if I have time. I know that sounds terrible, but I do plan on getting to Strega before the end of the year. Definitely before the end of the year. I promise it will get read. But yes, I like to think that I had a very successful month. I really, really did enjoy all of these books. And some of them, though they weren't exactly the spooky Halloween-y type things that I was hoping for, were still, you know, spooky in their own you know, relative way, and I loved all of them, and I am super excited to start November. As always, thanks you guys for watching, I will see you next time, and remember, books are the escape.